Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Almighty, Almighty God, God, to you, you all hearts, hearts are, open, are open, all desires all known, known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the, by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, name through Christ, Christ our Lord. Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Purify our conscience, Almighty God, by your daily visitation, that your Son, Jesus Christ, who is coming, may find in us a mansion prepared for himself, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the second book of Samuel. When the king was settled in his house, and the Lord had given him rest from all his enemies around him, the king said to the prophet Nathan, See now, I am living in a house of cedar, but the ark of God stays in a tent. Nathan said to the king, Go, do all you have in mind, for the Lord is with you. But that same night, the word of the Lord came to Nathan, Go and tell my servant David. Thus says the Lord, Are you the one to build me a house to live in? I have not lived in a house since the day I brought up the people of Israel from Egypt to this day. But I have been moving about in a tent and a tabernacle. Wherever I have moved about among all the people of Israel, did I ever speak a word with any of the tribal leaders of Israel whom I commanded to shepherd my people Israel, saying, Why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now, therefore, thus you shall say to my servant David, Thus says the Lord of hosts, I took you from the pasture, from following the sheep, to be prince over my people Israel, and I have been with you wherever you went and have cut off all your enemies from before you. And I will make for you a great name, like the name of the great ones of the earth. And I will appoint a place for my people Israel and will plant them so that they may live in their own place and be disturbed no more. And evildoers shall afflict them no more as formerly from the time that I appointed judges over my people Israel and I will give you rest from all your enemies. Moreover, the Lord declares to you that the Lord will make you a house. Your house and your kingdom shall be made sure forever before me. Your throne shall be established forever. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him, in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones, 
and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel, for he has remembered his promise of mercy. The promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from Paul's letter to the Romans. Now to God, who is able to strengthen you according to my gospel and the proclamation of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery that was kept secret for long ages, but is now disclosed, and through the prophetic writings is made known to all the Gentiles, according to the command of the eternal God, to bring about the obedience of faith to the only wise God, through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever. Amen. The Word of the Lord. Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Luke. Glory, Glory to, to you, you, Lord Christ. Christ. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He'll be great and be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord will give him to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, how can this be, since I'm a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called the Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has already conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her, who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, 
Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Hello, beloved of St. Paul's. Hazel Glover here. It's good to see you on this last Sunday in Advent, the fourth Sunday in Advent, as we reflect on the Annunciation of Mary when the angel visits her. Mary must surely was not expecting visitors, much less a visit from an angel. And the first words out of Gabriel's mouth must have thrown her for a loop. Can you imagine just being, going about your daily business and this angel shows up in all his glory and says, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. When he sees that she's startled, frightened, and perplexed, Gabriel just keeps talking. Do not be afraid, Mary. You found favor with God. Do not be afraid. How can Mary not be afraid? Angels don't come to Nazareth, and they certainly don't come to poor peasant girls like Mary. Maybe the angel is mistaken, or lost, or looking for, for a different Mary. The Annunciation is one of the most popular subjects in Christian art and has been painted as far back as we know to the catacombs at Rome in the fourth century. Most artistic depictions of the Annunciation, Mary looks calm, accepting, assured, even prayerful. The pictures the art is full of light and cherubs, hovering angels and lilies symbolizing spiritual purity and virginity. St. Bernard of Clairvaux says the lilies, to him, symbolize Christ himself. I only found one image in my search of Annunciation today, of Mary appearing to be troubled. It was a 1914 depiction of the imagination of John William Waterhouse. And she's just distraught looking. She's sitting on a a side of the, a wall outside. She's not as well dressed as she is in most of those are. She doesn't look put together. And she's got one hand up here and one here. And the angel's standing there. This was, looks like a female angel. Everything's open interpretation, right? And I'm stuck there. And I'm, I'm curious about why artists normally skip to the part in the end where Mary is you know, soul is magnifying the Lord. How does she get out of that place of fear? I want to quote Nowen, who I love to quote. He says about do not be afraid. Do not be afraid, have no fear, the voice we need most to hear. This voice was heard by Zechariah when Gabriel, the angel of the Lord, appeared to him in the temple and told him that his wife Elizabeth would bear a son. This voice was heard by Mary when the angel entered her house in Nazareth and announced that she would conceive, bear a child, and name him Jesus. This voice was also heard by women who came to the tomb and saw that the stone was rolled away. Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. The voice uttering these words sounds all through history as the voice of God's messengers, be they angels or saints, it's the voice that announces a whole new way of being, of being in the house of love, the house of the Lord. The house of love is not simply a place in the afterlife, a place in the heaven beyond this world. Jesus offers, a, offers us this house right in the midst of our ancient world. When I reflect on this narrative from Luke, I wonder how Mary made the transition from being troubled, perplexed, to saying that my soul magnifies the, the Lord. How did she get out of her fear into the house of love? How did she get to the place, well, nothing impossible with God. Let, here I am, the servant of, your, of the Lord. Let it be done according to your word. There's one little hint in this gospel. And it's when Gabriel says, Do you not know... After Mary says, how can this be? I'm a virgin. He says, do you not know your relative, Elizabeth? Old, said to have been barren, lost her time to 
really have children is now six months pregnant. Maybe that's the point where Mary goes, oh, everything is possible with God. So on this Advent right before Christmas, this Christmas we'll have to be outside of our normal holy sanctuary till 12 midnight or later. I'm wondering how we can move from that place of fear and confusion, perplexity, and just, you know, being off-center without having that place to just go soak up the smells and the songs and the music and the prayers and Eucharist, of course. I'm not big in giving advice, but I think if for me, if I could practice living into the words of today's colic, especially on the front end, where it reads, Purify our conscious, Almighty God, by your daily visitation. Purify us, our conscience, our minds, our choices, by visiting us daily. Mm. Now I think maybe if I could be open to surprise, because God is always a surprise. <laughs> The things like the nave or the same people we see year after year at Christmas and Easter it is not the way we will hear God's love, which is not the way that we can fall in love with God again and begin to trust. We need to be open to be surprised. God's news is frequently too good to be true, and messages are often wholly unexpected and astonishing, but the message remains the same. God is with us. Need not be afraid. God will always surprise us. In fact, I think God's in the business of surprising us again and again and again. But the Scripture is filled with God showing up in the most unlooked for places and the unlikeliness of people. People encounter with the God of wonder in bushes that burn, donkeys that talk, raging whirlwinds, pillars of fire, and under starry night skies. God has a way of amazing us on the tops of mountains, at wells in the noonday sun, and strangers bearing gifts. No matter how often we look for God in familiar places, God will somehow be revealed in the unexpected, the unlooked for, and the unpredicted. When I think about what gets me afraid or why I get afraid when it comes to making being open to surprise and asking God to appear for my conscience. I remember back when I was struggling and changing careers from professor to priest, my spiritual director said, Hazel, just develop a, a breath prayer. What's that? And he said, well, sit in a chair and imagine that Jesus is standing right in front of you. And Jesus says, Hazel, what do you want? Make it a short prayer, you know, real clear, whatever you want to call God. And then your petition, what you would like. And I came up with, uh, Lord, open my heart to you. And I prayed that again and again as I was walking or swimming laps or just trying to go into a hard meeting with someone. And it was very difficult for me to, to live that prayer. Lord, open my heart as if God was going to open it. And I finally realized I had to change the words a little bit. Lord, help me want to open my heart to you. It's a bit of fear when we stand in the face of the holy or even open our ears in our hearts to hear what God is calling us to. It's much more comfortable to stay in the same place. But if we let our fears keep us in safety, we'll never live fully or grow into the sense of what we're doing really makes a difference in the world. I'm reminded of Eleanor Roosevelt who said, you have to take chances. Actual, actual quote, every day do something that scares you. 
Or every day, she said again, you must do the thing you think you cannot do. Or Ralph Waldo Emerson, different way of saying the same thing, always do what you're afraid to do. So as we journey to the manger once more, may we seek once again to be surprised by God who finds favor in us, who has lifted up the lowly and filled the hungry with good things. May we in our lives and our living magnify the Holy One. May we be messengers of God who seek the divine in the midst of the ordinary and perplexing times. And may we in joyful song proclaim the greatness of the Lord. May your Advent and your Christmas week be one of surprise, new experiences of the holy, and old, old, old deep feelings of sacredness that reside in you. Because Christ does visit us daily, if not every second. Love and peace to you and yours. Standing, let's reaffirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, True God, God from, from true God, God begotten, begotten, not, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son he is worshipped and glorified, he, he has spoken through the prophets. prophets. We, we believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. church. We, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. sins. We, we look, look for the, the resurrection of the dead, of the dead and the and life of the of world, world to come. To come. Amen. Amen. In peace, we pray to you, Lord God, for all people in their daily life and work. For our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone. For this community, the nation, and the world. For all who work for justice, freedom, and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation. For the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. For the peace and unity of the Church of God, for all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth. For Michael, our presiding bishop, Rob, Paul, and Don, our bishops, and for all bishops and other ministers. For all who serve God in God's church. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation, we pray for those on our prayer list, Jeff, Phil, Billy, Mark, David. Hear us, Lord. For your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We give thanks for those who celebrate birthdays this week, especially Pat, Elizabeth, Ben, Morgan. We will exalt you, O God, our King. And to praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them who put their trust in you. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy, mercy upon us, us most, most merciful, merciful Father. In your, in your compassion, compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown. 
things, things done, done and left undone. And so, so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may we live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness by the power of the Holy Spirit. Keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and a joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, because you sent your beloved Son to redeem us from sin and death and to make us heir to him of everlasting life, that when he shall come again in power and great triumph, to judge the world, we may without shame or fear rejoice to behold his appearing. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we'd fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you and your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he gave thanks to you, he broke it. Gave it to his disciples and said, 
Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he given thanks, he gave to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. died. Christ, Christ is, is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will, will come, come again. again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, and the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also. They may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And to the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to pray. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as ye forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine, For thine is, is the kingdom, kingdom and the, the power, and the glory, and the glory forever, forever and ever. ever. Amen. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God.
Let us pray. Eternal, Eternal God, God, Heavenly, Heavenly Father, 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 you have, have graciously accepted us as living members of your, of your Son, our Savior, Savior Jesus Christ. Christ. And, and you have fed us with, with spiritual, spiritual food in the, in the sacrament, sacrament of his body and blood. And blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the sun of righteousness shine upon you and scatter the darkness from before your path and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you and those you love this day and always. Amen. Amen. in peace, to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. To God.